Ming Lava, welcome to MITV's special talk show, Perspectives. For this show, we have invited guest of honor Wu Ejian, who is counselor of Myanmar Press Council and chairman of e-commerce association of Myanmar and deputy chairman of Myanmar Digital Economy Association of UMFCCI. Ming Lava, thank you very much for your kind presence. So. This time, we are going to talk about mobile money and digital wallets. So, Saya, please explain about uh, mobile and digital wallets. Well, well uh, it's, it, people, it's best to give an example. The ones mm-hmm. that we are every day using, like KPay, mm-hmm. Wave Money, OK Dollar, these are the mobile wallets mm-hmm. where you can send the money easily, you can make payments. They become quite popular at the time, that, like, like last year when the banks, uh, you're unable to withdraw money. So we, we make a lot of settlements through these uh, digital wallets. Mm-hmm. So can you tell me something about digital wallet statistics? Okay, in the whole country itself, uh, we have about 24 million uh, wallet accounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, the wallets are provided by the mobile financial services license holders or wallet, wallet owners, uh, wallet holders, wallet license holders. Yeah, some are owned by banks, uh, such as KPA, CBP, that type of thing, or some are uh, non-banks, uh, mobile wallet uh, providers, uh, such as uh, Wave Money, uh, OK Dollar, Ampersand, the, that type of uh, uh, entities. Yeah, so these are the, 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 the mobile wallet providers. And plus, uh, mobile wallet accounts, they're typically segregated into level one and level two. Level one, we have about, out of the 24 million, we have like 18 million level one accounts, and the rest six million is in level two. Mm-hmm. So what is the current situation of wallets? Well, well recently, about uh, two months ago, CBM, made the, CBM uh, Central Bank of uh, Myanmar, uh, made the announcement that uh, all the level one accounts have to be converted into level two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is for part of the uh, know your customer KYC regulations that uh, uh, we need these days, yeah. So uh, uh, they need to convert within three months, uh, which is not so easy. Uh, but uh, I think it's it, it given a little bit more time. I think it will be okay. Yeah. Obviously, when the CBM make the announcement, there's a lot of negative uh, connotation, a negative interpretation of this announcement, as if you know they want to the government want to take over all the level one accounts. The government is not pro business. All this type of fake news stories mm-hmm. uh, coming about the internet on that announcement, how, the, how do we continue to make uh, small businesses will die, all these things. Yeah, so the reason that the reality is really further from the truth. Yeah, so uh, actually, you know, uh, around that time, is bef- around that time also, actually we are trying to address the, uh, what is the anti-money laundering, anti-money laundering issue uh, performed by the FATF. You, you, you heard of the news, right? We have, Myanmar has been put under FATF blacklist. Mm-hmm. But the black lift says not not an issue like it's just that you know people try to create fake stories on uh, Facebook saying that because of the black list we cannot do business anymore. Is the 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 reality is so far from the truth, right? Along the until like 2016, we have always been Myanmar has always been on the black list since the 1990s, right? And then from the 2016 until 2022, we are somewhere in the gray list or brown list in between. Yeah, then we began blacklist again because of the uh, certain uh, fulfillment requirements that we haven't been able to fulfill yet. And one of these requirements is know your customers, KYC. Right, when the mobile wallets are first created around 2013, right, we, are, we set up the uh, object, we set up these wallets, we let the wallets prosper in the country with the objective of financial inclusion. What is the meaning of financial inclusion? Financial inclusion means from the even very poor can use can be part of the financial system mm-hmm. of the country. Mm-hmm. So when at that time when the wallet started, when you want to open the account, you don't even need the IC, you don't even need the NRIC ID card, mm-hmm. right? You can just open it with a phone number. It doesn't even have to be your real name. It can be your business name, or it can be your fake name, or it can be your mother's name, right? As long as you have a phone number, right? Then and, and the name, you can open a mobile uh, wallet account such as the wave pay or whatever. Yeah, but as the time grows, as the time uh, takes, uh, as the time proceeds, right, uh, the, F- uh, the FATF as well as the BIS, Bank of International Settlement, 
they impose certain rules that you need to have know your customers requirement. You need to know the know your customer me who is a wallet holder. The wallet holder has to be the real person mm -hmm. who actually has the entitlement to the money in the wallet. Yeah, so that digital wallet. See, with that requirement, right, then uh, we knew then the government has to uh, implement that. So the implementation means you need the you cannot just have the wallet account with just a fake phone number and fake name. Mm -hmm. You need to have you need to be a real person with a real name uh, that match with the real phone number. And that, that's why we have to move from uh, level one to level two. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you your 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 bank or your phone was lost or uh, pickpocketed, then this level two will. Can we move up? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's one of the reasons that we should move to level two. Mm -hmm. Because in level one, if your phone is or if your mobile money is hijacked or has been stolen by somebody, it's very difficult to for the law enf enforcement to follow up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the mobile wallet is not under your name, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's not under your IC. How do you prove that it's really it's really you who own it, mm -hmm. right? You may have opened up that mobile wallet account with your mother's phone number, mm -hmm. right? But the money is yours. Mm -hmm. Then if people cheat you out of that money, how do you follow up? Mm -hmm. Right, the money is yours, but legal titleship is your mother, or maybe even your friend, or that phone number no longer exists. Yeah, so how? Yeah, the ownership of the phone number is not you also. Mm -hmm. So then uh, it's very difficult for the law enforcement to follow up to catch the criminals. Mm -hmm. That's why you must have this uh, upgrade to level two. Mm -hmm. So this is... How do we move up to level two, yeah? Oh, well, moving on level two is simple. You can just take your a photo of your IC, mm -hmm. identity card, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with your phone, uh, right? Then you can send it to the uh, wallet provider, mm -hmm. right, digitally. Mm -hmm. And plus some of them may require you to take the photo of yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So then that's the, only, uh, that's the only requirement to move up to level two. It's quite easy, mm -hmm. yeah? Obviously, it, the primary objective is fraud prevention, and the other one is we need to move up to, uh, uh, <laughs> we need to get out of the blacklist. Yeah, that will be the part of the objective. And plus, the everywhere nowadays, we need KYC, know your customer regulations, plus mm -hmm. eKYC, electronic wallets also, we need mm -hmm. eKYC, what we call. Mm -hmm. So what happened if we, if not converted, to level two. Yeah, because if you look at the uh, statistics, statistics, even the top three, KPay, WavePay, and OK Dollar, they themselves is already comprised of uh, you know seventy five percent of the eighteen million level one account. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to do uh, a lot once you tackle this big three, which is already covering a lot. You know, uh, and uh, obviously the question that you ask, what happened to the accounts that are not converted, is one of the key. Uh, public concerns, they're asking what happened. Uh, CBM expects at least 75% of the accounts will be converted into level two. Because at the end of the day, you see, if you do not care about your account and your own money, who else will care, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why you should convert, mm -hmm. right? So um, but even if the, but the point is, even if the 95% uh, of the accounts is converted, you will still have like nearly 1 million dormant accounts left the ones that are not converted. So obviously, uh, these dormant accounts, right, eventually have to be converted. If not, you know, it, it's, you won't be able to use anymore. That's not very good. What happened to the money in these accounts? Yeah, obviously, if this money, if the wallet providers cannot take the customer's money away. Mm. So, so uh, at the end of the day, you know, the, the wallet providers, if you are non-bank wallet providers, of course, banks wallet providers, they will follow the banking regulations and the regulations for a bank. For non-bank wallet providers, whatever the money in the wallet, they do keep an equivalent amount in the trust account with their partner bank. So it's quite quite strict regulations are. You cannot just take the that domain account money. So whatever the domain account is the same as the domain accounts in the banks, right? Whatever in your bank account is not touched for so many years, so it will be there, right? So eventually you will be eventually you have to convert to level two. Uh, having said that. Right, even if each dormant account is uh, has ten dollars uh, on average in outstanding balance in the wallet, so you have one million. Mean there's a ten million uh, uh, dollars outstanding in this account, 
And some more, at the end of the day, you will also realize that the, the wallet accounts, nobody pay interest on them, right? We just give the money there. So even if each wallet account has $10 inside, we have 24 million wallet accounts in the country. So it's about $240 million uh, that doesn't earn any interest sitting in the wallet accounts. Mm -hmm. So uh, what will be the future of digital wallets? Well, the first step is we have to, we are moving up to level two. So that is the first step. That's mm -hmm. the future. Everybody, almost everybody, in my opinion, will move up because it's a good thing to do. And that is also a way of helping the country to fulfill the KYC, know your customers' uh, requirements by international community. That's the first one. The second one is, you know, uh, these wallets eventually will be synced with the SIM cards. Mm -hmm. right? right now, also, SIM card registration process is also ongoing mm -hmm. by Ministry of uh, Transport and Telecommunication. You need to register your SIM card under your own actual names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one of the users. So that, that too can gel. So wallets and uh, SIM can gel. And the final integration will be to gel with the uh, Ministry of Immigration, your mm -hmm. ID card. Yeah, so your ID, uh, your SIM card, and your wallets will be all integrated to the correct person who own these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the integration. Plus, uh, the future is the oh, the future that that future about inter wallet integration, which means right now, if you have KP, you can only send the money to KP. You cannot send the KP money to Wayfair. Mm -hmm. So in the wallet compa compatibility mean you know from Gateway to Wayfair to Wayfair to okay okay to somewhere you can send it or across yeah so this this thing has been uh, talked about by CBM since 2018 I believe that it's going to happen in the near future yeah so from one wallet you can send to another wallet you can send the money transfer funds to another wallet so that is the uh, future another future somewhere down the road is the inter-country wallet incompatibility, with, at least within ASEAN level, mm -hmm. right? So you can send from the wallet account in Myanmar to uh, money to a wallet in Thailand or in Singapore, perhaps. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that is also the, the future of the wallets. That is provided that you have the full KYC on the wallet. You know what I see me? You, the owner, the actual owner, the beneficial owner, and the SIM card owner, the ID all match together. Mm -hmm. That is a, that will be the full KYC. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing if all are well connected and integrated, yeah. Uh, integrated. Yeah. So, can you think about uh, the future for this kind of integration? Yeah, in, in, in terms of the well, I want to talk about in terms of the economic contribution. Mm -hmm. You know, the wallets will continue to stay. The wallet, the wallets will continue to be popular mm -hmm. despite this. All these, you know. Uh, false conversion from level one to level two because people have gotten used to the wallet a lot and the ease of the transaction, making doing transactions over the mobile wallets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because if you just look at the dollar and cents and the transactions volume, in 2021 alone, there are about 700 million wallet transactions. Yeah, the total transaction value is about $21 billion. That's 2021. Yeah, so uh, that is like, you know, if you talk about value, it's about one third of the Myanmar economy, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, this all the transactions are not just, you know, business transactions. It can be transfer payments. Transfer payments are like non-economic non activity. For example, your mother cannot work, so you are working. So you send some money to your mother through KP or Wayfair. That is the transfer payments. Mm -hmm. That is not an economic activity. Yeah, so the also from that figure, we also can find out the average wallet transaction in Myanmar is about $30, mm -hmm. average wallet, uh, average wallet uh, transaction amount. And, uh, and the size of this, the value, also represents the presence, significant presence of the uh, great economy because one third of the GDP cannot be the, represented by wallet transactions alone. Right, so a lot of great economy, a lot of transfer payments involved. That's why the wallet transaction volume, a dollar, dollar, not the volume, the transaction value is about 21 billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to see the whether the wallet is going to slow down or not, in 2022, if you just look at the first nine months, trans transaction volume is already 680 million. It's reaching the whole year volume of 2021, which is 700 million. 
in terms of value, the transaction value total is about uh, 18 billion. Wow. Last year is last year total was uh, 20 billion. But last year is a full year. This year is only nine months. This year is not done yet. Mm -hmm. Nine months is already reaching the last year figures. So the wallets are going to become uh, going to become more and more popular uh, future down the road. Yeah. So what else do you want to say about uh, online shopping are also very popular these days. So it will be very booming business in future. Well, yeah, well, well, this is not just only used for online shopping it, or on the other things as well. Mm -hmm. You know, transfer payments are also very popular. Mm -hmm. Transfer payments, not economic activity. You send money through here and there. You mm -hmm. send to support some somebody, mm -hmm. somebody who cannot work. You mm -hmm. send money for your children and yeah, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so in the in the in the wallet from from the these services uh, integration and also to the regional countries uh, integration. So it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with me your interesting uh, information for our audience. Thank you. You have been watching MITV special program, Perspectives. Thanks for joining us.